Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. I guess the news related to Israel uh, in the last few days is regarding the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. Now, this is news because of the, many people actually are looking at, the, looking at this resignation in connection with the prophecy of St. Malachi. A Catholic, a Catholic Archbishop who wrote some 900 years before, he said from his time on there would be 112 popes and that the last pope would be an evil pope. And um, Pope Benedict is the 111th pope. So whoever this is that's coming up uh, as the uh, one who would follow the subsequent uh, pope, has a prophecy with regard to him from St. Malachi. And basically it says this, In extreme persecution, Peter the Roman, Petrus Romanus, who will nourish the sheep in many tribulations, when they are finished, <clears throat> the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the dread, dreadful judge will judge his people the end. Now, there are two things that I would suggest that we be alert to, especially those of us who are Israel watchers. Number one is this next pope that comes will be here before Easter. He'll, he'll be ordained uh, a latter part of March or March sometime. Is his name Peter the Roman? And if that's the case, we need to stay closely tuned. Now, <clears throat> the second thing I would suggest would have to do with the agenda that the Vatican has for Israel, J Jerusalem. Uh, primarily, and more particularly for the old city of Jerusalem. For years there have been negotiations going on as to uh, what would be the role of the Vatican, but now just this past January, uh, the upper room, which was the place where the Last Supper took place and where Pentecost uh, was celebrated, uh, the upper room was given, uh, well, this is what, Israel Hayom reported. It's a uh, internet news vehicle, is reporting that the agreement will grant the Pope an official seat in the upper room as well as giving the Vatican a special modicum of control over the site. Al Jemeiner, another uh, news outlet, reports that Israel did not give up sovereignty, no, but will allow the Vatican control over the site, evidently some manner of custodial control. Now, in light of that, um, and keeping in mind we're having this prophecy in the background for us, uh, yesterday Prime Minister Benyan, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, wrote a letter to the Pope, and he says, Your Holiness, on behalf of the people of Israel, I want to thank you for all you've done as Pope to strengthen relations between Christians and Jews and between the Vatican and the Jewish state. He goes on to say this, Your historic visit in 2009 offered a rare opportunity to give expression to the new relations between our faiths. I remember fondly our meeting in which you referred to Judaism as Christianity's elder brother. You had that one right. And which you reaffirmed your commitment to a cooperative future between Christians and Jews. Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister. Now what will that uh, cooperative future look like? Well, let me suggest that you give consideration to this. And it's a statement by an investigative reporter in Israel. His name is Joel Bainerman. And he's done uh, quite an extensive study. And he asks the question, so what is the Vatican planning and what can Israeli Jews do about it? And he says this, for centuries the Vatican has been pushing its replacement theology doctrine, namely... Uh, that states that the Catholic has replaced Israel as the new Israel. Now that's prevalent today. That, uh, that continues today. He goes on to say, The end goal of the Vatican is to seize control of the old city of Jerusalem out of the clutches of the state of Israel. To do that, uh, to that end, they have a secret agreement with Israel which obliges Israel to respect the extraterritorial claim to their physical presence in the city. 
In short, we have accepted the Vatican's rights, this is Israel speaking now, quote, we have accepted the Vatican's rights to have little Vatican sovereign embassies throughout our eternal capital of Jerusalem. The same Vatican has committed itself in public and in written agreement to, to ensure that the Palestinians have sovereignty over the old city of Jerusalem. That's their agenda. He closes by saying it, this, the purpose of this essay is to warn you of the exact intentions of the Vatican so that you'll be a, quote, informed consumer when it comes to Israel's relationship uh, with the Roman Catholic Church. When the overt clauses of the Vatican Agreement, <clears throat> the uh, exchange of ambassadors, the opening of the Vatican archives to Israel researchers have not been fulfilled by the Vatican, from an Israeli perspective, quote, the fundamental agreement between the Holy See and the State of Israel, end of quote, has been a complete failure and should be immediately rescinded. So I would suggest to you, Pope Benedict's resignation opens a whole view, a possibility of the future uh, of their in relations with Israel. And I would suggest in light of the Malachi prophecy that many of our people are observing very closely. If this next pope is named Peter the Roman, we've got to dig in, stay tuned with spiritual ears. And secondly, knowing what the agenda is of, of the Vatican, namely that it would have control over Jerusalem and particularly the old city. What is the agenda of the Vatican concerning Israel? Till next week, Oed Ki Yavoshilo, or until Messiah comes, Shalom Aleichem.